making this video because I could just got done watching a couple of videos about Hebrew Israelite groups in New York City and they were having a little bit of a confrontation with some police officers because there was a person accusing them of assaulting them. Now, there's only a limited amount that I could hear about what happened. But before that part of the video came on, the, the thing that concerns me about these brave young men that are out there on the streets, and, you know, let me do this. I applaud their heart. I applaud their effort. And I'm sad at, well, how they've been misled. And I think it's pretty obvious by looking at their signs and their, their, well, it seems hatred of white people. Now, is it really their fault that they feel better by hating white people? Probably not. It's probably really isn't even their fault that they hate white people. Now, it's very understandable that you know, people being the superficial people that they are, they look at what's right in front of them, what's superficial. I mean, if, if a person is of a black color, and there's a white color people that are constantly oppressing them, there's no wonder that they're angry about that very very angry you can't blame them how, how can you blame somebody that you know if, if they're if they're if they're one color skin and then another people another color skin we're not just talking about one incident in a person's life a single incident that you have one race in this race and at one point in time in their lives there's a there's a problem and that's it we're talking about constant, 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 constant. How can a person look at that and say, I don't understand why that person has to be that way. Well, excuse me, I understand why people are that way, but it also saddens me to, well, because I realize what's going on. And I'm obviously, I'm having a hard time gathering my thoughts together to make this video. But it, it does, it saddens me to see what's going on because, you, you know, I'm looking at this group of people and they just, they have so much heart for what they're doing. They do, they have so much heart, but they've been misled. Somebody grabbed a hold of their heartstrings, their emotion, grabbed a hold of their heartstrings and said, Hey! Hey, we can get even with these people that treated you bad. We can get even with them. Now, is that what's supposed to happen? Do, do you honestly believe in your heart that there's a place for you in the new kingdom in order to get even with another race of people? Think about it. Really think, you know, look in your heart about that. Do you... Is that what you find when you read the scriptures in the Bible? Is that what you find? Now I realize that people they don't they don't do their own research. They really don't. They go as far back as the King James Bible and they say, This is it, this is the word, this is what we're standing on, because hey, on this page right here it says so. So that's what we're gonna do. Well, how about you go back and look at the Hebrew text. If you want to be a Hebrew Israelite, look back at the old Hebrew text. Now, I've seen some people out there that they can speak the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew language, and the, the real Hebrew language, not the Yiddish, the real Hebrew language. I, I've seen some people out there on video, and, and they know it very well. But I believe even those people are missing something. And it's so simple what they are missing. And what they are missing is, in the Hebrew language, when names are created, those names are created to describe the character of that person, or the character of that entity, being, let's say, a spirit, or a god, or whatever the entity, it really doesn't even matter. 
because the Hebrew original Hebrew language was pictographs, pictures, and each picture had numerous meanings associated with what that picture meant to an individual within that culture. So there's many, many meanings. I mean, there's only 22, I believe it's 22 original pictographs. And out of 22 original pictographs was enough for an entire culture to survive. And then those pictographs were turned into a little bit different form of writing, but it was still the same thing. In each pictograph, in each Hebrew letter, has a meaning. It has a symbolic meaning. And that's what people are not grasping onto. They're taking the old ancient diction, because it's easy to, hey, listen, you want to know how simple it is to do this? It's very simple. Very simple. Look at You look at the Strong's Dictionary for Hebrew words, and there's the meaning for you, right there. But that's the diction. That's the common usage of the word. Now what you have to do is take the individual letters or the individual pictographs and then there's two different forms of meaning with that too. There's a literal meaning and there's a symbolic meaning. You will be amazed if you start at the beginning of your Bible and you pick out each name, okay? If you look at the old ancient Hebrew, okay, and you know how to read it, or if you go to and look at, there's a man by the name of Jeff Benner. He has what's called the mechanical translation, where it's very easy to read. It's in English, and he has two translations. He has a literal word-for-word -word translation of the old Hebrew text, and then he also has the Hebrew text written in English, but put in a context based on what he sees as the diction and the culture of that time. But he does not go so far. He go, Well, he goes so far as to take the names and give you what the diction was. But I'm telling you, that is not... That's not what the meaning is. The meaning is the symbolic meaning. Because the symbols, the pictographs, were symbolic. They were symbols of the character of whatever they were describing. So you have to look at the symbolism. And I'll tell you what, it tells a story. It's not going to take you a whole lot of time to do it. Listen, you, you know, you, if you're a so-called Hebrew Israelite, there is no good reason on this earth that you would not want to look at the ancient letters the, or the ancient pictograph, whichever you choose, whatever form you like. I happen to like the pictographs. I haven't actually uh, got my hands on an easy version to go through, an electronic version, when I say easy, with the original pictographs, because I think they're easier to look at. And I think that's probably the difficulty a lot of people have, because they look at the, the Hebrew letters and the Hebrew script, and they look at it and say, wow, there's a lot of things that are very similar. And it becomes difficult. I can't blame an individual for getting confused. It confuses me too. So I have to be very careful in looking back and forth and back and forth and trying to get the right picture. Now, if there was out there somewhere, and if somebody knows, if they would please tell me where there is one that has the original pictographs, which are much easier to identify, that that would be that would be really nice for everybody involved to see that. It would. It would be very helpful. But anyhow, even with the Hebrew script, a person can get the symbolic meanings because that's the way it was put together. Now I just put for somebody on an answer somewhere, I put an answer... I'm going to pull up my screen here. I put the answer for the Yahweh that's spelled Y-H-W-H, that people pronounce Yahweh. And well, that may not actually be the pronunciation when the when those letters are put together like that. But irrelevant to that is the symbol the symbolic meaning for Y H W H is simply to make, to reveal, and to reveal. Now with Hebrew the ancient Hebrew language, 
when things are grouped together and there's two of the same letters, the second letter takes on a different character or like I've heard some people they call it uh, inflection, a different inflection. So it's one form of reveal and another which makes perfect sense because if you read it out it says and the one form is to make to reveal and then the second form is to reveal. So that's how it kind of it in the language it leads people to get the proper meaning. So what does that mean to you? To make to reveal and to reveal. Is that not the job of the Holy Spirit? I believe everybody that claims that they pray to the Holy Spirit or they have the Holy Spirit it helps to reveal to them truthfulness and things like that that it's it reveals and it's I do believe that that's a very accurate interpretation I believe it so much that I believe that's how the book was created with those words and those meanings that that's how it was built because with the with the Hebrew language and each pictograph having many meanings to each picture makes for different combinations many different combinations and you'll find that as you start going through using the method of deciphering that I had just mentioned you'll find that there's going to be more than one interpretation and you're going to be seeking in your heart the Yahweh to make to reveal and to reveal. You'll be seeking that. Now, if you have racism in your heart, you're not going to come up with the right answers. You're not. I just had mentioned to somebody about uh, the word Adam. Now, the word Adam, which was used in the first part of Genesis, and the translation and the mechanical translation the, the man chose to use the word human he felt that was the most accurate in that scenario well some people would translate it as man because that is one of the translations of it but also one of the translations of Adam is ruddy which means red and one of the comments I left on, on somebody's thing was because I already see the, the racial well there's a racial hatred going on so people get incited, they say, look it, look it, Jesus was a black man, okay, the white man killed him, okay, the white man's the devil, the black man is not the devil, and they work on this precept, and they just, they fester this racial hatred, which is what got their forefathers in trouble. Because if you you read the book, read the Bible, read, read all the scriptures, and you'll see that there's a racial hatred in there. And I don't disagree with them about about you know the color of people's skin that they were darker people and they were lighter people. I don't disagree with that. But remember this: remember what their racial hatred got them. They got exiled from their nation for it. Do you really think a god that exiled somebody for their racial hatred and their constant disobedience is going to gain the, the new kingdom? Say, hey, here you go. Here you go, Mr. Racist. Here's a key to your kingdom. Do you think that's, that's what a uh, good and honest and just God would do? No way. No way would that happen. So you're really going to have to rethink in your heart why it is you feel the way that you do. Especially seeing that God's chosen people. It's fair to say that the characters in your King James Version Bible that you use that have the characters Adam and Eve, okay, that Adam was a red man. Because that's what Adam means. Ruddy. Red. So God's chosen people, at least the man, was red. Now I guess it depends on what you believe after that. 
Because the next thing is, where did the woman come from? If the woman came from what common people translate as the woman literally came from a piece of the body of that man, that first man, and that woman came from a piece of that body, that means that woman was a red woman, a ruddy woman. Would it not? I do believe it would. Would that, wouldn't that? that what it would make? So it would be a red man and a red woman were the first humans in the Garden of Eden. Not a black man, not a white man, a red man. That's what the book says. Now I've heard people that are on this racist trip talking about uh, Jacob and Esau. And how there's a description in there that Esau, Esau was one of those ruddy people. He was described as ruddy. He was red. And some people say, well, that was just when he was born because white people are red looking when they're born. Okay. So we could say that uh, Adam also was ruddy just because he was born. He was new. But he was a white man. And then the woman that, you know, if you really believe that the woman came made from a rib and wasn't a woman that was brought to the man that we don't know what color this woman was or where she came from. We don't know that. And if you look at the ancient Hebrew scriptures, you're going to find out that it doesn't tell you where this woman came from that was brought to the human, the man, the Adam, the ruddy one. It doesn't say. So you really got to rethink what it is that you're thinking. Because you're going to find out as you start looking at the scriptures. Are you going to accept the truth or not accept the truth? Because either God's chosen people according to the way that your Bible is. The King James Bible was either white or red or a white or a red man to start with and then we don't know what color woman what race woman we do know at this point in time right we do know whether we can agree back and forth or not that the first man was a white man or a red man okay we do know now that there has been such an intermingling since that time Okay? There has been. There's no two ways about it. That you're not going to be able to judge who was one of these chosen people as far as in their genes. Because that's what people are like, oh, gee, you know, that's how we inherit this. Because they're all based on this inheritance. Oh, this is an inheritance uh, through Jacob. And Jacob, you know, had this land over there and it's Israel. And it's supposed to be ours. And well, we're supposed to have an inheritance. And that bastard over there. He wants to take it because he thinks that it was supposed to be his. And that bastard over there, he thinks it his. And we're talking about something that's of man. Man's rules and man's laws of inheritance back then. It's ridiculous. You're talking about over 2,000 years ago, okay? A government rule. Let's get this straight. It was a government rule of inheritance or a cultural rule of inheritance which serves no useful purpose today. None other than to create strife and chaos and war and murder and evil. It serves no useful purpose. You want to know what color color that that God's chosen people are, no matter what color they were in the beginning? They're the color of onyx. Now some people say, we win! Onyx is black. No, it's not. No, it's not. Most of the fake onyx is black. Fake onyx is black. There is natural black onyx. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But if you want to use onyx, which that is the true representation, is onyx. 
Onyx ranges in color from white to yellow to tan to red to brown to black. Guess what? Every single color and race has God's chosen people. You better get used to that fact.